Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 922. world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about how generations are faring financially through the pandemic. Now, I did an earlier podcast about this, and it was very interesting to find out how people were spending money, what they were doing with it, how they were faring, where they were having problems, where they were doing just fine. And that's what I want to report to you today through a study that was done by Northwestern Mutual called the 2021 Planning and Progress Study that surveyed more than 2,000 American adults. This Northwestern study was very interesting, and here was their finding on COVID-19 and financial behavior. It said, in just over a year, so many habits and behaviors have been transformed by the pandemic and they extend well beyond social distancing, face masks, and working from home. Northwestern Mutual Research finds a third or 32% of Americans say their financial discipline has improved during the pandemic and 95% say they expect their newfound habits will stick after the health crisis subsides. These are the first set of findings from the 2021 Planning and Progress Study, an annual research project commissioned by Northwestern Mutual that explores Americans' attitudes and behaviors toward money, financial decision-making, and broader issues impacting people's long-term financial security. The study finds that the pandemic and related events have prompted people to get proactive with their planning. Nearly one out of five, or 17% of U.S. adults age 18 plus said they didn't have a financial plan before the pandemic, but now they have one in place. Overall, 83% of people were prompted to either create, revisit, or adjust their financial plan during the pandemic. Among the behaviors that people say they've adopted and expect to maintain going forward are, first, reducing living costs and spending, e.g. cancel subscriptions, eat out less, etc. 45% of people are doing that. 34% of people are paying down debt. 33% are increasing their investing, good for you. 29% are regularly revisiting financial plans. 28% are increasing use of tech and digital solutions to manage finances. It would probably be like apps and things like that. And 25% are increasing retirement contributions slash savings. Now here are the setbacks and postponements. Nearly half or 45% of Americans say the pandemic has impacted their timeline for achieving long-term financial security with most saying it's a setback of one to two years. 15% say it has set them back less than a year. 18% say it has set them back one to two years. 9% say it has set them back three to five years, and 3% say more than five years. For Gen Z and Millennials, it's a majority. 63% and 65% respectively say they've been set back financially, but the amount of time lost for these generations is consistent with the broader population, as the most common estimation is one to two years. Additionally, more than one-third or 35% of people have postponed a major financial or life event because of the pandemic, including 17% who are making or funding a large purchase or project such as home renovation, new car, etc. So they're putting that off, 17%. 10% are putting off changing jobs or looking for a new job, and 9% are putting off buying or building a new home. In forthcoming data sets, the 2021 Planning and Progress Study will explore wide-ranging issues facing Americans spanning savings and debt, work and retirement, planning priorities, and more. So now this part is called the financial recovery. Most Americans are still contending with the financial impact of the pandemic, according to the latest set of findings. The research finds more than half, 58% of U.S. adults, say they are still in financial recovery mode. But among them, 9 out of 10, or 89%, express confidence that they will ultimately achieve a full financial comeback. Awesome. For those in recovery, the research shows that the majority feel they are making considerable progress. 
34% say they're in late stage recovery, meaning they suffered losses, but have mostly if not fully recovered to pre-pandemic levels and are feeling confident in their ability to achieve long-term financial security. 47% say they're in mid-stage recovery. They've suffered losses and have begun making up ground, but have not yet reached pre-pandemic levels and still remain optimistic about their ability to achieve long-term financial security. And 18% say they're in early stage recovery, meaning they suffered losses, are still in decline, and are unclear how they'll achieve long-term financial security. Across a range of different categories, year-over-year numbers indicate that people's financial lives are trending in the right direction. Average personal savings are up over 10%, from 65,900 last year to 73,100 today. Average retirement savings increased 13%, from 87,500 last year to 98,800 today. And financial security is nudging upward from an average of 6.3 on a 10-point scale last year to 6.5 today, saying they have financial security. Going a layer deeper into savings trends reveals a more nuanced story. One third or 33% of people say they have been able to save more over the last year. Nearly a third, 31%, say they are saving less or stopped saving altogether. And one in 10 say they have had to dig into savings and are going backwards. The study asked people what they see as the best financial defense against future economic uncertainty and or market volatility going forward, and two replies stood out, each receiving more than three times the number of responses than any other option. Far and away, the steps that people see as their best financial defense are having an emergency fund slash personal savings. 30% feel that having an emergency fund and personal savings are their best defense. And 27% feel having a financial plan is their best defense. Among the third of Americans who say they've been able to save more in the last year, they attribute it to reduced discretionary expenses, 35%, prioritized saving overspending, 23%, Increased income, 18%. Reduced living costs and necessary expenses, 15%. In a positive sign, three quarters or 74% of people say they have good clarity on exactly how much they can afford to spend now versus how much they should be saving for later. But maintaining momentum over time will require a long-term view, and the study shows that planning horizons today are quite short. Among the 58% of Americans who say they are in financial recovery mode, only 14% are actively planning more than five years out, while most are planning month to month, or 24% are doing that. So that's the end of the study, which I thought had a lot of really great information in there. So overall, I thought this study had pretty good news. There's about 10% of the population that seems to be struggling still or going backwards. But otherwise, a lot of people are making progress, moving forward, still able to save, put money away, fund the retirement, and move forward in the right direction. That's all really great news. I want to remind you that the review contest is ongoing until September 20th. You can win one of 35 prizes Five people will win one-on-one wealth mentoring sessions with me. Ten people will win You're Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now, my book that is on the list of all-time best wealth books by Book Authority, and gives you a financial blueprint like your millionaire action plan and your wealth heiress checklist, the perfect things that might be helpful to you right now if you are looking to get a plan or you are looking for steps to take to move forward. And 20 people will win my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197. All you need to do is leave a review for Be Wealthy and Smart on Apple Podcasts if you have an iPhone. Or if you listen to the podcast somewhere else, I'm open to you reviewing it on another platform, any platform where you listen to Be Wealthy and Smart. Review it there. Send it to me in an email so that I know that you made the review and where you reviewed it. You can send it to me at lpjhome at gmail.com. And that way I can include you in the drawing and you've got an excellent chance to win as well. So it doesn't matter where you write your reviews, either on Apple Podcasts or on any platform. And if you've read the Wealth Heiress book and you leave a book review on Amazon, that will get your name in the drawing two times. 
and winners will be announced on the September 20th podcast, so make sure to mark that on your calendar to tune in that day and see if you've won. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.